Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today's case has been on my radar for years now. I'm pretty sure I first came across this case back in 2020. Like it has been that long and I have just been waiting for this case to go to trial because it happened so long ago. This case took place in 2016 and it only literally has only just gone to trial. And the reason why today's case took so long to go to trial is because the perpetrator in today's case, I don't even know how I would describe him. I think just disruptive attention seeking. His courtroom antics have definitely become a little bit infamous and today we are covering Bryce Rhodes. I'll just ask you why do you keep refusing to get this man off my case when we keep having problems? Do you have something personal against me to where you don't want to move him? Back in 2016 Bryce Rhodes was arrested for triple murder and ever since 2016 he has still been causing chaos. He even at one point accused the judge of being a sex offender. He was throwing his urine on people. I don't know if y'all got some type of sexual relationship going on. Now I'm talking about you and a prosecutor over us, sir. He was also forced to wear a mask because because he was spitting on people. I think he just likes attention. That kind of person, they just crave all eyes on them. But there is another very significant thing to Bryce's personality, and that is that he was also an aspiring rapper. And there is part of me that hates that I'm doing today's video because it's giving him more attention. However, we are going to highlight today just how much of a terrible human being Bryce Rhodes is. So yeah, that's what we're covering today. So let's jump in. So I just want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Magellan TV. I'm sure you guys remember last week's case, Tall Hot Blonde, and all of the catfishing and the massive twist in the case. I mean, how could you forget that twist? Well, recently I have been watching a documentary on Magellan TV that covers cases very similar to last week's. It's called Murder on the Internet, and I highly recommend that you all go check it out. The documentary is a two-part series, and it does cover many cases, one of which is the case of Cole Langdale, who is an absolutely disgusting man. Back in 2015, Carl set himself up a profile on the dating site Plenty of Fish and he presented himself as an upstanding gentleman. He had everything going for him. He was a successful lawyer. He had multiple degrees. He even posted photos of himself with Boris Johnson. And this is when he met 23-year-old secondary school teacher Katie Locke online. She agreed to go on a first date with Carl. And this is when he decided to act on his sick and twisted fantasies. And her whole world gets turned upside down. And the series is pretty fast paced because it does cover a lot of cases and it covers many different horror stories of just the internet, catfishing, dating. And if you found last week's case interesting, Tall Hot Blonde and Thomas Montgomery and his disgusting ways, I think you will enjoy the documentary Murder on the Internet. And I'm sure most of you know by now, but just in case if you don't, Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service. And Magellan TV have one of the largest collections of true crime documentaries out there. But they don't just have true crime documentaries. Magellan TV have so many documentaries on so many different genres. Oh my god, there is one on Spider-Man. I think that is the next one I'm going to watch. They have a mobile app. You can watch it on your laptop, on your TV, anywhere. And Magellan TV is just perfect for all of us true crime junkies out there. And if you love documentaries, which I do. And best of all, Magellan TV are offering every single one of you a full one month free trial. And if you guys wanted to take advantage of that absolutely incredible offer, then you can go to the link in my description box, which is try.magellantv.com forward slash Danielle Kirsty. And using that link really does help out this channel because it lets Magellan TV know that you came from this video. And then you can go get your one month free trial and you can go and watch Murder on the Internet right away or whatever documentary takes your fancy. Thank you again to Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. But thank you to every single one of you watching right now because truly without all of you guys, I wouldn't get opportunities like this. And now let's jump into today's case. Bryce Rose was born on the 9th of August, 2020, making him a Leo. And he grew up in the city of Louisville, Kentucky, where he lived with his mom, his younger sister, and then multiple brothers. Now, we don't actually know too much about Bryce's childhood. However, we do know that it wasn't easy. It has been said that his childhood was filled with trauma and abuse. And I don't have any more information than that. But Bryce himself has said that the abuse that he suffered as a child had a huge impact 
impact on the rest of his life, which of course it would. Bryce's home life as well was also pretty messy and chaotic. So he was raised by his biological mom, Shauna, but then his mom and his stepmom got into a pretty nasty custody battle over Bryce. Now the biological mom won the custody battle, but there was just a lot of tension, a lot of atmosphere between the two families. And Bryce was kind of stuck in the middle of that. But then another thing that was very significant to Bryce's childhood, he had an extremely low IQ. He also struggled with ADHD and bipolar disorder. And when he was aged 15, it is said that he had the cognitive ability of a preschooler. He just struggled to process information and he struggled to retain information as well. And that meant that Bryce soon fell behind his peers in school. He also struggled a lot with anger. He was constantly getting into fights at school. Now, Bryce's stepmom actually seemed like a pretty decent person. She could see that Bryce was struggling and she wanted to get Bryce help. However, Bryce's biological mom, Shauna, didn't want to get him help. So Bryce never got any help. Bryce has also been described as incredibly lazy. He would avoid doing absolutely everything, like down to his schoolwork, to chores, work, like anything, he would avoid it. Bryce has also said that he struggles with trust issues due to the very nasty custody battle when he was a child. And with his childhood, even though we don't know too much from what we do know, I think we can all just assume that there was just a lot going on, a lot of struggles. And then we skip forward to Bryce's later teenage years. So this is just after Bryce left school and things from this moment on only get worse. Because after leaving school, Bryce's only ambition in life was to join a gang. He had no other dreams or aspirations, no. He wanted to join a gang. He thought that that was what was going to make him feel accepted in life. He wanted to be a part of something. And in Bryce's mind, he felt like he had to join a gang to feel like that. However, there was one problem. No gang wanted him. Bryce literally went around and was begging on his hands and knees, please let me in, but no gang wanted him. He was shunned by every single gang that he wanted to join. But Bryce felt like he had to prove himself to these gangs. Like if he proved himself to them, if he proved that he was hard, he was macho, he was willing to do whatever, well then a gang, any gang would finally accept him. So Bryce made the very, very stupid decision to participate in armed robbery because he thought that that would impress a gang. However, it didn't impress any gang and it actually just had devastating consequences. Because on the 24th of April 2009, Bryce is currently 18 years old. This is when Bryce decided, along with eight to 10 other young men, to rob a group of teenagers at gunpoint. So around 9 p.m. on this evening, Bryce and his little gang were hanging around the boys and girls basketball club in Jeffersonville. When a group of four teenagers, both boys and girls, left the basketball club and they were just leaving, they were making their way home, they all sat on a bench waiting to be picked up. When Bryce and the group of men swarmed these teenagers at gunpoint and wanted to rob them. One of the gang of men had a semi-automatic handgun and they passed it to Bryce. And then Bryce, feeling like he needed to prove himself, got the gun and placed it against one of the teenagers' heads. And he was acting threatening towards these teenagers, demanding that they hand over all of their belongings. And these poor teenagers, they were absolutely terrified, like anyone would be with a gun placed at your head. The teenagers immediately started emptying their pockets, giving over everything that they had on them. And in the end, Bryce and his little gang managed to collect $45 and two cell phones. And it's like, wow, armed robbery for that. Was it worth it? So after Bryce and his little gang managed to rob these teenagers of $45 and two cell phones, they fled the scene and the teenagers immediately reported what had happened. And then it was just days later that Bryce was tracked down and he was identified by the teenagers as the gunman. And then Bryce Rhodes was arrested and charged with armed robbery robbery, to which he was found guilty of, and he was sentenced to six years in prison. And he's just 18, like literally fresh out of high school. This is the first thing that he's doing, trying to get initiated into this gang, and he's landed himself in prison. And then from this moment going forward, Bryce would be in and out of prison. It was just a revolving door. As soon as he got out of prison, 
he was straight back in. In Bryce's early 20s, he was released early from prison. Don't ask me why, but he was released on parole. But did it take long for him to violate his probation? No. Like I said, he was in and out of prison and he got sent back to prison for various different offenses, such as intimidation charges, domestic violence charges, drug charges, and another theft charge. So he would get sent back to prison for violating his probation, get released, violate it again, get sent back to prison, he would be released again. And it was just like that, literally back and forth. And worst of all, Bryce was also charged with committing a sexual offense against an underage girl. Apparently he kidnapped a girl who was under 18 and I don't know any more details than that, but it must've been pretty serious because he landed himself on the sex offender register. And I'm like, wow, this is the kind of person you keep releasing back into the public? It's like, why? So then we get to 2013. Bryce is currently 23 years old. And this is when he would get released from prison for the final time for now. And at this point, Bryce moves back in with his mom and his younger sister in Louisville, Kentucky. And they live in an apartment block. Now Bryce has spent the last five years pretty much in prison. He's approaching his mid twenties now. And for his whole adult life so far, He's basically been in prison. You would think that he would never wanna go back to prison. He would change his ways, change his behavior, get on the straight and narrow. But does Bryce do that? No, no, of course. Otherwise I wouldn't be filming this video because pretty much as soon as he got released from prison, he was back in trouble with the police. And what for, do you ask? Well, he beat up his mom. Yeah, for domestic abuse charges, he beat up his mom pretty badly. He beat her up with his bare hands and a wooden chair. And she was left in a pretty bad state. I don't know her exact injuries. I just know that it was pretty bad. I mean, he beat her with a wooden chair. However, it seems like the charges were dropped. So Bryce never got charged with anything in the end and he never went back to prison. But that was not the only time he assaulted his mom. No, 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 no. In September of 2014, he did the exact same thing again. Bryce's mom, Shauna, was just at home and she was just putting groceries away. That is all she was doing. And then Bryce, he just flipped. He just lost it. He grabbed his mom by her neck, pulled her and dragged her by her hair. And then he punched her repeatedly in the face before throwing her to the ground. And I'm like, wow, who does that to their mom? And the only reason that Bryce stopped the attack on his mom is that his younger sister was in the home at the same time. And she had to call the police to get the police out to stop him. And you would think that this time he would get sent back to prison. He was just placed back on probation. Does it stop Bryce? No, because a very similar incident happened with Bryce's girlfriend. So Bryce managed to find himself a girlfriend. I don't know how, because I don't know how anyone could stand to be around this man. His girlfriend fell pregnant, which is never a good idea to have a baby with someone like Bryce. So Bryce and his girlfriend, they welcome their first child, but Bryce is violent. He's an angry person. There was an incident in July of 2015 where again, he just attacked her. He attacked his girlfriend. He repeatedly punched her in the face. And the worst thing about this is that she was holding their four month old baby. So she was literally holding a baby baby in her arms and Bryce thought that that was the opportune moment to attack her. And if that doesn't tell you how much of a monster Bryce is, I don't know what will. But did he go to prison? No, he was actually just placed back on probation. And it's just so frustrating because he's already on probation for the second attack on his mom. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what conditions are his probation? Surely he is violating his probation by attacking another person. I'm sorry, it is madness. So that is Bryce Rhodes, really in a nutshell, and his criminal background. And he's still so young, he's 23, but it's like, how much has he already done? But there is another very significant thing to Bryce's personality that we haven't spoken about yet. And that is that he was also an aspiring rapper because Bryce's music and his rap videos, they are on YouTube. And I will make you all suffer by playing you some. I'm 
So Bryce was a wannabe rapper, and I'm going to say wannabe rapper because some of the reporting on this case have actually the audacity to call Bryce Rhodes a famous local rapper. And I'm like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're not going to give him that much credit and praise. Well, trap guy, bitch, I'm looking for a leg. In a trap spot, bitch, I'm busting down a brick. I ain't never told no motherfucking lie. Off of one zip, bitch, I've seen about five. He is not a famous local rapper. No, he is not. He is a wannabe rapper and he is not talented. So it was around the time when he got released from prison for that final time. It was around the same time when he assaulted his mom for the second time and also his girlfriend. Bryce was currently 24 years old and he decided to start posting a ton of rap videos on YouTube. He truly is so delusional. He thought that he was going to become a famous rapper. Maybe he thought that that was going to be the avenue that he went down to get initiated into a gang. Who knows? These rap videos, oh my God, they are so cringy. I felt so much secondhand embarrassment watching them and my ears were also bleeding. So Bryce Rhodes, his rap name was Rambo. Yeah, Rambo. <laughs> really? And he posted various original songs on YouTube. Oh my God. Some of the names of his songs, like one name was called Snot. But then there was other songs called Body Armor, Trapping and Jugging, which is definitely his most famous song. He would also feature in other local rappers' videos, and then they would also feature in his videos. And he often made reference in his songs to like gang life, even though he's not in a gang. He would rap a lot about sex, drugs, guns, crime. And I will be inserting some of the music videos in here so you can see how cringy they are, but not too much because he is holding a lot of guns in the videos. So if you wanted to actually watch the whole video yourself, you're going to have to go over and look at his YouTube channel. But there's one thing that is pretty common for every single music video that he does, and that is that Bryce likes to take his top off. That is definitely his thing. Ramble get power, ramble get guns. Wanna go to war, bitch, I do this shit for fun. Got a lot of hitters, most of them young. Jugging through the city, bitch, I'm always on the run. So Bryce, I think he really was convinced that he was going to become a famous rapper. He was clearly delusional thinking that he has any kind of talent. He's clearly surrounded by yes people, but there was something that Bryce still wanted more than anything and that was to be in a gang. However, no gang wanted him. He still couldn't find a gang to join. So Bryce thought to himself, okay, well, I'm going to make my own gang. However, Bryce didn't recruit people of similar age to him. Oh no, no, no. It seems like people Bryce's age don't want to be around Bryce. So instead, Bryce recruited young, vulnerable, impressionable teenagers. Bryce wanted people that he could easily influence, easily manipulate, people that were impressionable and saw Bryce, the fact that he had gone to prison, the fact that he was this famous local rapper, they would look up to him, aspire to be like him, aspire to be in this gang because Bryce, he really did have that persona that he was in a gang, that he was a gang leader. He wanted people to think that he was living this life of luxury. He had all this money, he had nice cars, jewelry, the clothes, the girls, but he didn't have any of that. He was just really good at pretending that he did. So Bryce started to hang around the local basketball courts, recruiting anyone that he could. And the ages of the teenagers that he would recruit could be as young as 13, 13, 14, 15, 16. And he started telling these young teenagers that he was a famous rapper, that if they hung around him, they could also get a little bit of piece of that pie. They could also be famous. They would also get money, power, respect. Bryce used his music video videos as some sort of credibility. He also promised these young teenagers that they could feature in his music videos. 
And that is exactly how he enticed all of these young people to follow him. Because these young teenagers, they thought that Bryce could offer them a better life. And Bryce really did keep up this facade that he had a lot of money, that he was powerful and he had a lot of respect. He would buy the recruits in his gang gifts. He would buy them clothes. He would take them out for meals. He would just give them money. And it's like Bryce does not live the life of luxury. He still lives with his mom. But these teenagers, they didn't think like that. They just saw Bryce and they thought, oh my God, he has so much money. But Bryce wasn't doing this out of the kindness of his heart. He was buying these teenagers gifts and giving them money because he wanted the teenagers to be in debt to him. He wanted the teenagers to owe him one. And remember I said that Bryce was incredibly lazy, that he never wanted to lift a finger, never wanted to do anything. Well, that's where these teenagers came in handy because these teenagers would do all of Bryce's chores for him. These teenagers would do his laundry, get groceries, clean the home. He was also forcing these teenagers to participate in criminal activity like selling drugs and that is clearly where all of the money was coming from. And these poor teenagers, they were just going down the wrong path. They were looking up to the wrong person. And two of these teenagers that wanted to follow Bryce in his little gang of teenagers was 14-year-old Larry and 16-year-old Maurice who went by Reese. And they were brothers. They were both born in Louisville, Kentucky. And their mom was a woman called Elizabeth Wren. She gave birth to both Larry and Reese when she was incredibly young. And Larry and Reese, they're pretty much exactly two years apart. Both of them have different fathers, and neither one of their fathers ever stuck around in their life. So Elizabeth raised both of them on her own. And right now, both of the boys are actually in the same class at school. And it's said that Reese had always struggled with school, so he was held back a couple of grades which is why he was in the same grade as his younger brother, Larry, which was the eighth grade, by the way. However, Reese he didn't exactly thrive in the school environment. However, he did thrive in other areas. He loved music and he was a pretty gifted basketball player. And then his younger brother, Larry, he had pretty much everything going for him. Larry was an honor roll student. He got incredible grades, but he was also good at sports as well. He was also really good at basketball. And Larry was just the kind of kid that was good at everything. And the two brothers, they were inseparable. They were basically like twins. Even though they're two years apart, they were literally two peas in a pod. Reese did have his struggles and Reese definitely did not have it easy because when he was 14, he was made to attend a summer camp that was run by the local police department. And the summer camp was designed for youths at risk. However, Reese at this summer camp was treated terribly. It is reported that Reese was bullied and abused by the police officers that ran this camp. There was physical and mental and emotional mistreatment of the young people at this camp. It wasn't just Reese. He wasn't just singled out. A lot of the teenagers at this camp were treated terribly. The young teenagers at this camp, they were woken up in the middle of the night. They were taken outside in the freezing cold, made to do hundreds of push-ups in the middle of the night. They were bullied and there was name called from the officers to the young teenagers. The teenagers at times as well were also denied food and water. At times, the teenagers had to resort to drinking rain water because they were that thirsty. There was also threats of physical violence against the teenagers as well. So Reese did not have it easy at that camp. Nobody that went to that camp had it easy. Going to a camp like that is not going to help anyone. And it didn't help Reese. So then we skip forward two years. Reese is now 16 and his younger brother, Larry, is now 14. And this is when they had the unfortunate experience of meeting Bryce Rhodes. And now everything truly would go downhill from here. Before Larry and Reese met Bryce, they have both been described as just good kids. Wouldn't harm a fly, just good, nice, respectable, happy teenagers. Neither one, Larry or Reese, had any interest in joining their gang. However, as soon as they met Bryce, he completely corrupted them. And you might be wondering, okay, so how did they meet Bryce? Like if they have no interest in joining a gang, how did they come across someone like Bryce? Well, unfortunately, Bryce started dating their mom. Larry and Reese's mom, Elizabeth, she started dating Bryce. And then obviously Bryce met her two young, impressionable teenage boys. And Bryce thought, 
great. These are the exact kind of people I need in my gang. And when Bryce was dating Elizabeth, he took Larry and Reese under his wing. And from this moment on, Larry and Reese were hanging out with Bryce all of the time. And Bryce did the exact same thing to Larry and Reese as he did to all of the other teenagers in his gang. He wanted to impress them, so he bought them gifts, meals, clothes. He enticed them into this life of luxury. Oh, look at me. I've got so much money. I'm going to be this famous rapper. And Bryce started taking Larry and Reese to a load of parties. And he introduced Larry and Reese to alcohol, drugs, violence, crime. He was leading both of them down a very dangerous path. And their mom, Elizabeth, she didn't seem to care. Larry and Reese even started to carry Bryce's guns for him. And it's like, oh my God, they're 14 and 16. And no one seems to be looking out for Larry and Reese, having their best interests at heart. They even featured in Bryce's rap videos. And it just breaks my heart when you see them in these videos. <laughs> You can see that they've possibly been smoking. They look high, they're carrying guns. And it's like, oh my God, they should not be a part of this world. They are far too young. And when I was watching the music videos, I couldn't get over how many young people were in these music videos. And one of the other music videos, one of Bryce's other songs is called Get Money and Murder. All I sell is Hank, all I sell is Hank. Tell flying down, bitch, Rambo is a tank. Get money and murder. Get money and murder shit, get money and murder, get money and murder shit. And I'm like, wow, given what happens in this case, that is very chilling. And this relationship between Bryce, Larry and Reese goes on for a few months. And Bryce gets Larry and Reese to do all of his dirty work, which includes all of his chores, just anything that he needs doing. But he also got Larry and Reese involved in criminal activity. Both of the teenage boys started selling drugs, getting involved with robberies, burglaries. And it's like Bryce is so desperate to be in a gang. He's so desperate to be in gang activity. Like he just does doesn't care how much danger he's putting all of these teenagers in. And Larry and Reese were basically Bryce's right hand men. They were always seen riding around with Bryce in his car. And Bryce did have a few other teenagers in his little gang, but I am only going to introduce you to the significant people in today's case. So we have a boy who was 15. His name was Anwan Carter. He was actually friends with Larry and Reese in school. I think they were in the same year at school. And that is how Anwan first got introduced to Bryce through Larry and Reese. Then we've got 17 year old Ja'Cory Taylor. And then we have 19 year old Tyron Coleman. And again, before they met Bryce, all three of them have just been described as great people friendly, nice, wanting to succeed in life, wouldn't harm a fly. So Bryce has five very loyal members of his little gang. And this makes Bryce feel very powerful and important. He's finally the leader of his own gang. However, getting involved with Bryce would destroy all of these teenagers' lives. Because we now skip forward to May of 2016. Bryce is now 25 years old. And this is when two major tragedies occur in today's case. So Bryce, even though he has his little teenage gang going on, Bryce still wants to be in a proper gang because he's not actually a gang. He was so desperate to just be in any gang. He didn't care what gang it was. He just wanted to be in a gang, but still no gang wanted him. However, in May of 2016, Bryce got word from someone in the local area that a local gang was looking for someone to run an errand for them and in return they would be paid. So Bryce thought, yes, this is my opportunity. Bryce thought that if he could do this errand for this local gang and if he impressed them, maybe they would include him and accept him in the gang. Basically like an initiation. So Bryce approached this local gang and was like, hey, I hear that you need an errand run for you. I'm your man. I'm going to do it. What is it? And unfortunately, the errand that the local gang wanted was a hitman. They wanted somebody, I don't know who, maybe a rival gang member or just somebody, or I just don't know. They wanted somebody murdered and they were looking for a hitman. And Bryce 
jumped at the opportunity. Bryce wants to be in a gang that much that he's willing to murder somebody over it. So the gang give Bryce details about the person that they want murdered. They give descriptions of where they're going to be, what they look like, etc. And Bryce accepts the errand. And Bryce truly thought that if he murdered this person for this gang, if he did a good enough job, the gang would finally accept him. So Bryce started making plans for the murder. But was Bryce going to carry out this murder on his own? No, of course he doesn't. He decides to drag poor Larry and Reese into this terrible plan. And Larry and Reese didn't know about the plan to murder somebody. So on the 4th of May, 2016, Bryce goes out driving with his little teenage gang. So in the car, we have 16-year-old Reese, who is actually driving the car. Then we have 14-year-old Larry. And then in the back seat of the car, we have Bryce Rhodes, 15-year-old Anwan, and 17-year-old Jacory. So they're driving around. They go down South 41st Street, and they're just driving around. They're probably causing a bit of nuisance, a bit of trouble. And then Bryce looks out of the window, and all of a sudden, he spots a man walking down the street. And Bryce was like, oh my God, that is the person I'm supposed to carry out the hit on. And who was this man? This man was 40-year-old Christopher Jones. He was a father of two. He has been described as an incredible person, an amazing father, loved his family. And he was just walking down the street, minding his own business, thinking that he was just any other day. And Bryce took one look at him and thought, is that the person I'm supposed to carry out the hit on? Yet, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So Bryce shouts to Reese, who's the one driving, pull over. And Reese does as he's told. Everyone in the gang has to obey Bryce at all times. And this is when Bryce Rhodes jumps out of the car, runs up to 40-year-old Christopher. And before Christopher even knows what is happening, Bryce Rhodes pulls out a gun and shoots Christopher in cold blood. He shoots Christopher in the torso and Christopher, it all happened so fast. He didn't even know what had happened. He didn't even have chance to get away, defend himself. The bullet tore through Christopher and he was left with a terrible injury and he collapsed on the sidewalk. Bryce ran off, ran back in the car and he orders Reese to drive away. Now back in the car, Reese and Larry in particular are panicking. They are like, what just happened here? They did not sign up to murder somebody. Larry and Reese are saying, what should we do? We can't just leave him there to bleed out. Shouldn't we call an ambulance? But Bryce tells Larry and Reese to shut the hell up, to keep their mouth shut. And if they ever said anything about what has happened, they would be punished. So the teenagers and Bryce, they drive off. Bryce has driven off and he's so happy because he thinks that he's carried out the hit on the right person. He's so happy thinking, oh yay, I've murdered that person that the gang wanted. Now I'm finally going to be in a real gang. However, Bryce was wrong. Christopher Jones was not the person that the gang had ordered the hit on. Bryce had completely mistaken his identity. Christopher Jones was an innocent person, had done nothing wrong, was never involved in gang activity, didn't even know anyone in a gang. And now Christopher Jones is just there on the sidewalk and he's bleeding out. A passerby finally found him and called an ambulance. Christopher was still alive and he was rushed to the hospital. However, because his injuries were that bad and because it took so long to get him to the hospital, Christopher Jones died of his injuries. And that just breaks my heart. He had a family who loved him and cared for him. He had two children. And just because Bryce wanted to be a part of a gang, Christopher lost his life. And for what? So Bryce at this point still doesn't realize that the person that he has murdered is the wrong person. He's all happy thinking that he's carried out this hit successfully. So because he's so happy, he wants to reward and treat his little teenage gang. So he takes Larry, Reese, Anwan, and Jacory out for lunch. He gave them a few threatening words though, i.e. if you ever say anything, I will kill you. Bryce then went to the gang that he had carried out the hit for, said, I've done it. 
But then this is when Bryce found out that he had murdered the wrong person. So Bryce actually looked like a fool. Not only did Bryce not get any money for the hit, he also wasn't initiated into the gang because he looked like an idiot. The police did open a murder investigation into Christopher's murder, but because it was basically a drive-by shooting, because Christopher had no connection to Bryce or any gang, and because there was no witnesses, there was no way for the police to link Bryce to the murder. So right now, Bryce is in the clear. However, even though they're in the clear, Larry and Reese are still panicked because they didn't sign up for this. It's almost like this was kind of a wake up call for Larry and Reese. This was not the world that they wanted to be a part of. However, Bryce was a very scary person, especially now that he has just randomly, in cold blood, killed somebody. Bryce could see that Larry and Reese were a liability. They could possibly go to the police and ruin everything. So Bryce kept threatening Larry and Reese. If you ever go to the police, you will be punished, blah, blah, blah. And Larry and Reese, they kept their mouths shut. But even though they kept their mouths shut, they never forgot about what happened. Over the next couple of weeks, Larry and Reese start avoiding Bryce. They don't really want to be around him anymore. And whenever they are around him, they're very uncomfortable. They're very shifty. It's almost like that veil has come down now. They see Bryce differently. But Larry and Reese were also incredibly paranoid that they were going to get caught for their part in the murder because you have to remember that Reese was the getaway driver. That's a very serious offense. Even though Reese didn't know about the murder of what was going to happen, he could still possibly go to prison for a very long time. Both Reese and Larry were panicked. Bryce was getting very paranoid that Larry and Reese, it was only a matter of time before they went to the police until they confessed. And Bryce decided that he couldn't allow this to happen and that he needed to do something about it. He decided to take matters into his own hands. So unfortunately, because of this, we now get to the second tragedy of today's case. And so on the 21st of May, 2016, this is just 17 days after the murder of Christopher. Reese and Larry, they were just going about their lives as they always did. The family were actually planning a celebration because both Larry and Reese were about to graduate from middle school. So it was supposed to be a happy time in everyone's life. However, this is when Bryce Rhodes decided to take action because on the evening of the 21st of May, Bryce lured Larry and Reese to his apartment by pretending that he was throwing a party. Now, obviously, if you remember, Bryce lives at home with his mom and his sister. And there was always a lot of people in Bryce's apartment coming and going. However, on this day, Bryce's mom and sister were away. So Bryce had the apartment completely to himself. And inside the apartment are the other three teenagers a part of the gang. 15-year-old Anwan Carter, 17-year-old Ja'Cory Taylor, and 19-year-old Tyron Coleman. Now, at first, Larry and Reese, they weren't suspicious because the group or the gang, whatever you want to call them, they hang out at Bryce's apartment all the time. They're always having parties there. They're always going to parties. Like, this is nothing weird. However, what Reese and Larry didn't realize is that they had just walked into a trap because the group, they were now in Bryce's apartment. They settled down, relaxing, when all of a sudden, Bryce turns on Reese and Larry. He starts ranting and raving and shouting at them, saying that they've stolen money from him. Bryce just keeps repeatedly shouting at Reese and Larry that they've stolen money, that they're going to pay, they need to repay him, like give him the money back. And Larry and Reese were really confused because they hadn't stolen anything from Bryce. And they just kept repeatedly saying, no, we haven't, no, we haven't. Like we haven't stolen anything from you. Like we haven't done anything. And obviously none of this was true. Bryce was just trying to find a way to argue with Reese and Larry. So it's almost like Bryce is trying to make an argument with them as an excuse for what he's about to do. Bryce also accused Larry and Reese for snitching on him about the murder of Christopher. Bryce was utterly convinced that Reese and Larry, they had either told somebody else or they have even gone to the police about it. There is no evidence that Reese or Larry ever told anyone about the murder, but Bryce was completely convinced that they had. And Reese and Larry got really defensive. They were saying that none of this is true, that they hadn't snitched. They were getting really defensive and angry. And apparently, and I want to stress that apparently, Reese at this point picked up a knife and started waving it in Bryce's face. Now, I'm a bit skeptical about that 
that, if I'm being completely honest, because Larry and Reese, they are scared of Bryce. I don't know, it just doesn't really sound like them. Like, why would they pick up a knife and start waving it in someone's face that they're scared of? Like, it just doesn't add up to me, but it may have happened. However, this is when Bryce apparently grabbed the knife off of Reese and smacked him around the face with it, I assume with the handle of the knife, before Bryce said that he was going to violate both Reese and Larry for what they have done. At this point, Bryce instructed the other teenagers in the room, so that is Anwan, Jakori, and Tyron, to grab Larry and Reese and drag them into the bathroom and lock them in there. So whilst Larry and Reese are in the bathroom, Bryce calls a meeting with the other teenagers because he wants them all to vote on whether Larry and Reese should live or die. You heard that right. What the actual hell? Bryce asked the other three teenagers, should he carry out this murder? And unbelievably, two of the teenage boys voted yes. Apparently, one of the teenagers who was Anwan, apparently he voted no. And Anwan was the one that would later claim that he voted no. But I just want to stress that we have no evidence that he voted no. We have no evidence that he voted yes. All we know from this meeting, it was decided that Reese and Larry should be murdered, that Bryce should murder them for what they have done. And I'm like, what have they done? They have done nothing. So following this apparent vote, Bryce instructed the other three teenagers to grab Reese from the locked bathroom and drag him out first. Bryce then tied Reese's hands behind his back with a belt before shoving a pair of socks in his mouth, before placing a beanie hat on his head and pulling it completely down, covering his face. And I don't know why Bryce completely covers Reese's face. Does he do this so Reese can't see, so it's disorientating? Or does Bryce do it to dissociate from the situation? But then Bryce just attacks Reese. He just starts punching him repeatedly. And Bryce is just punching Reese over and over again until Reese falls on the floor. And whilst this is all happening, Larry, 14 year old Larry, is still locked in the bathroom and he can hear everything that's going on. He can hear his brother Reese screaming in pain, shouting, pleading, begging Bryce to stop. So Larry in the bathroom, not knowing what is going on, is completely losing his mind. Larry is screaming and crying in the bathroom, pleading from the bathroom for them to not hurt his brother. And Reese, he has a pair of socks in his mouth, but even with that, his muffled cries could still be heard. He was pleading with Bryce over and over again, please don't do this. I haven't done anything. Please, please, please. But Bryce didn't listen. He had tunnel vision of what he wanted to do. So this is sadly when 19-year-old Tyron handed Bryce a knife before Bryce just started repeatedly stabbing Reese in the torso and Reese was stabbed over and over again and he was screaming and shouting in pain. Larry was still from the bathroom pleading with Bryce to stop and this is when Bryce handed the knife to 15 year old Anwan because Bryce said that they were in this together, they were a gang and therefore they will murder together and he instructed Anwan to stab Reese once, which Anwan did. And then the knife was handed to 17 year old Jakori. And he was instructed to do the exact same thing stab Reese once because we're all in this together, which Jakori did. The only person that didn't stab Reese was Tyron. And then Reese was just left there on the floor. He was bleeding profusely. He may have already lost his life at that point. We just don't know. And then Bryce instructed Larry to be dragged out of the bathroom. So then Larry is dragged out of the bathroom and Larry sees his brother on the floor, possibly already dead. Larry was screaming and crying and that must have been so traumatic to see his brother, his best friend, on the floor in a pool of his own blood. But then the exact same thing happened to Larry. Bryce tied up Larry, put a pair of socks in his mouth and put a beanie hat over his head. And then Bryce just attacked Larry. Again, started stabbing him over and over again. And the same thing happened. Bryce handed the knife to Anwan. Anwan stabbed Larry once. And then the knife was handed to Jakori. And he stabbed Larry once. Both teenagers are now lying on the floor, bleeding profusely from their wounds. And this is sadly when both teenagers, Reese and Larry, lose their lives which is just heartbreaking. They were so young, 
14 and 16. That is how old they were. They had their whole lives ahead of them and both of them were gifted and talented in their own right. They could have done so much with their lives had they not have met Bryce. So following the murder, what does Bryce try and do? Well, of course, he tries to get away with his crimes because he thinks that he's invincible. I mean, so far, he's gotten away with the murder of Christopher. So he thinks that he can also get away with the murder of Reese and Larry, which I don't know why he thinks that. Christopher was a complete stranger. There was no way to tie him to Bryce, but Larry and Reese are known associates of Bryce. Bryce also dated their mother. And I don't really know what happened with the relationship between Bryce and Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Larry and Reese's mom. I don't think the relationship lasted too long, but I don't quite know when it ended. They could even still be together for all I know. I mean, they definitely broke up when she found out what he had done. I don't know why Bryce thinks that he's going to get away with this murder. And right now it is the early hours of Sunday, the 22nd of May, 2016. This is when Bryce and the other three teenagers load Larry and Reese's bodies into wooden crates, loaded them in the back of Bryce's car, and then Bryce drives the bodies to to an abandoned house a couple of blocks away. And then once Bryce is at the abandoned house, he places both of the wooden crates in like an overgrown grassy area near the abandoned house. And then he sets the wooden crates on fire. And Bryce thought that he was really clever doing this. He thought that it was in the middle of the night. No one would see him. No one would even notice the fire. However, Bryce had created such a big fire that pretty much everyone in the local area noticed. Meanwhile, back at Bryce's apartment, the other three teenagers are there cleaning up the crime scene. And the crime scene was messy because it was a very messy messy, brutal murder. They were scrubbing the blood off of the carpet with bleach, trying to get every single scrap of evidence gone. And then when Bryce was happy with the cleanup, he then took the three teenagers out for some food, you know, as a little reward for murdering two innocent teenagers. And then he just drove the three teenagers home. But was Bryce about to get away with these murders? No, of course he wasn't. Thank God. And now we get to the downfall of Bryce Rhodes. So the next morning, the police arrived arrived at the abandoned house because many people had seen the fire and they found the two bodies. Now the two bodies, they had no ID on them. So they first had to identify the two bodies. The police released two sketches to the public of the two innocent victims, the two teenagers, hoping that someone will come forward with their identity. And a teacher actually came forward to identify both Reese and Larry, clearly one of their teachers from middle school. So now that they had the identity of the two bodies that they have found, they now had the devastating task of informing the families of the boys. And now they needed to find who had done this. Now from interviewing people in the neighborhood and just people that knew Larry and Reese, it didn't take the police long to find out that the last time anyone had ever seen Larry and Reese, both of them were getting into Bryce Rhodes' car the day before to go to a party. So the police set out to go and question Bryce Rhodes, but he is nowhere to be found. So the police tracked down another known associate of of Bryce and also Larry and Reese, which was 15 year old Anwan Carter. So they bring Anwan down for questioning. What does he know about his two missing friends? Remember that they go to the same school. And when the police start questioning Anwan, he told the police everything. Anwan couldn't hold it in anymore. He's actually the only one that has shown any kind of remorse for what he has done. Anwan went into detail about the night of the murder with Reese and Larry. He told the police how Bryce had tied both Reese and Larry up and then started beating them up and then stabbing them. He made my Reese from his knees. I'm like, babe, for forgiveness. And like he put a put the bag over his head and he put a stuff, he put his he put a rag in his mouth. Anwan even came forward about his participation in the murders, that he was forced by Bryce to stab both of them once. He made y'all stab him? So you and stab him too? Alright, how many times do you think you, you stabbed him? I stabbed him once. But Anwan also revealed to the police that Bryce Rhodes was also responsible for the murder of 40 year old Christopher Jones. And they seen somebody just walking in the street. And they said, Rainbow's like, at the street, just shot him. And then, by reason, 
police. He was a getaway driver, so he was driving. And the police were like, what? Because obviously that was an open investigation. So now Bryce Rhodes is wanted for triple homicide. A couple of days later, the police finally track down Bryce Rhodes and bring him in for questioning. However, when the police start to question Bryce, he just acts all innocent. Like he pretends to be all dumb, like he doesn't know what the police are talking about. Where they run away to? Like, well, if we knew that, man, we, or we wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I wish I could help you where they were, so, you know, I don't. However, at this point, the police have also gone over to search his apartment and they find blood everywhere. Despite the cleanup efforts, there was blood everywhere. So it didn't matter that Bryce was acting dumb. He was arrested and charged with three murders. The police also arrested Anwan and held him on murder charges as well. And then the other two teenagers that participated, so Ja'Cory and Tyron, they were also tracked down, arrested and charged with murder. And this is all back in May of 2016. And now what Bryce goes on to do all of his antics in jail and in the courtroom are what make this case so infamous because Bryce wreaks havoc everywhere he goes for the next seven and a half years. Because Bryce's trial has literally only just happened. In December of 2023, he finally went to trial. And this all happened in 2016. It's crazy. And you might be wondering, so what the hell happened? Like, why did it drag on so long? Well, I'm about to tell you. And this just makes my blood boil. Like his just whole attitude, oh my God. So first of all, Bryce decides to plead not guilty because of course he thought that he was going to be able to get away with murder. So following this, he was assigned a defense attorney, obviously. However, the attorney soon realized that there was a conflict of interest and had to excuse themselves from being his counsel. Turns out that the defense attorney had been friends with Larry and Reese's grandfather. So because because of that connection, they had to excuse themselves from representing Bryce. But did Bryce take this very well? No, no, of course he didn't. So when the attorney excused themselves, Bryce spat on his attorney. You heard that right. He spat on his attorney and he stood up in court and shouted to his attorney, you're a coward. I'll see you when I get out. Nice cheat shot. You a coward. Nice cheat You a coward. I'll see you. And I'm like, what the actual hell? The attorney is only excusing themselves because they don't think that their representation of Bryce would be fair to Bryce because of the conflict of interest. It's like, does he not realize that? It's actually in his best interest that he gets another attorney. And that is just the start of it. In August of 2016, he got into a fight with another inmate. He threw the inmate on the floor, cut his forehead and said that he would kill kill him like he did the others. In September of 2016, he got into another fight with an inmate where he spat on them. Something that you should know about Bryce is that he likes to spit. Yeah, he's a spitter. A few weeks later, Bryce threw a tantrum and refused to return to his cell. And he started throwing cleaning supplies at everyone. And then he got a broom, broke it in half. And with the broom handle, he started waving it at the prison guards saying that he was going to kill them. But it gets worse. It gets worse because five days after this, Bryce urinated into a bottle and then he threw his urine on a prison guard. What the hell? What is it with this man and bodily fluids? He's just absolutely disgusting. And then because of all of his antics, when he was finally in court, because he couldn't be trusted because he's a spitter, he has to wear a mask, like a mask to prevent him from spitting. And this mask, I kid you not, it looks like Bane. And he also had to be restrained as well because he also couldn't be trusted. Like he was just so volatile. His wrists and his ankles had to be restrained in a chair. And when he came into the courtroom, he was literally wheeled in on a wheelchair and he was basically strapped to this wheelchair with his Bane spitting mask on. And that is not something that you see every day. And it was that footage of him being wheeled into the courtroom and being restrained on the wheelchair and then him wearing that anti-spit mask that would later go viral on TikTok. And Bryce, was absolutely furious that he had to wear this mask in court, that he even threatened the judge to find out where they lived. And then when he got out, he threatened to kill them. In the fourth degree. I'm going to keep talking because I don't want to have to see you back here for this. So you're saying you're going to find out where I'm out?
But not just that, he also threatened to kill the judge's family. But it still doesn't end there. In January of 2017, just a few months after all of that courtroom drama, Bryce Rhodes was then charged with a felony because he tried to escape prison. Because one time officers just searched his cell and they found that Bryce had dug a hole under his bed with a prohibited metal object. Yeah, I'm not kidding. What? Bryce literally tried to dig his way out of prison. How did no one hear him doing that? Bryce was also sending threatening messages to the other teenagers that were involved in the murder, threatening them that rats will always get exposed. Bryce was also charged with an offence to do with this as well. And then throughout 2017, there was lots of other little dramas in the courtroom. And it was in 2017 that Bryce made the decision to represent himself. The kind of people that want to represent themselves, especially in a murder trial, you know the kind of personality that they are. They just want attention. They think that they're smarter than everyone in the room. They think that they can do what they want. So because Bryce was now his own counsel, he wreaked havoc on the criminal justice system. I'll just ask you, why do you keep refusing to get this man off my case when we keep having problems? Do you have something personal against me to where you don't want to remove him? I write the Bar Social and the ACLU, you know. I write them, you know. I see what's going on, you know. Fair enough. Let's get us a date to come back. No. Thank you. are going to find out, though. you are going to find out real quick. And this is where he reminds me of Daryl Brooks, because Daryl Brooks also represented himself. Yeah, I think they're pretty much the same person. I think they would probably get along if they ever met. Or maybe they wouldn't because they're too similar. Bryce continued to threaten the judge, throw insults at them. You're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. Because I can't. Well, because I can't. It's not a crime to smell. They even accused one judge of sleeping with the prosecutor on the case. It's my right to file a pro se motion, and it's my right to speak what I need to speak on. I, I, I don't know if y'all got some type of sexual relationship going on or what y'all got going on. Now I'm talking about you and a prosecutor over there, sir. All right. You denied well, all my motions. And then they even accused the judge of being racist and a part of the KKK. Every motion I file. Are thought. you some type of racist? Are you, are you, I've got some type of sex relationship going on? Which one is it? Or are you just wrong in everything huh? that you've made huh? a motion for? Are you it a secret Ku Klux Klan member? <laughs> no, sir, I'm not. Is that not. what you really are? Nope. Okay. And then on one occasion, Elizabeth, Reese and Larry's mom, she was in the courtroom and Bryce was turning around, like giving her just like taunting looks and blowing her kisses. And I'm just like, what the hell? You've murdered her two children. And Elizabeth became so angry at this that she actually tried to attack Bryce in the courtroom. A dramatic scene unfolded in a Kentucky courtroom when a mother lunged at the man accused of murdering her two sons. <laughs> And the years just rolled by. Bryce continued to delay the process, refusing to leave his cell, just dragging things out. He went under many psychological evaluations to see if he was even fit to stand trial, which he was. But he just kept pushing back at every single opportunity, just trying to drag it out as long as possible and get as much attention as possible. And meanwhile, whilst all of this is going on with Bryce, the other three teenagers actually take plea deals. 15-year-old Anwan Carter pleaded guilty to the facilitation of murder as well as tampering with evidence and he was sentenced to 10 years in prison and Anwan was actually released from prison in 2019 so he was released early on good behavior and he was released on parole on one condition that he pay for the headstones of the two victims Larry and Reese which he did. 17 year old Jacory pleaded guilty to the same charges as Anwan and he also received 10 years in prison and then 19 year old Tyron also was charged with the same offences and also received 10 years in prison. And I believe both Jacory and Tyron are still in prison to this day. And then we get to December of 2023, seven and a half years after all three murders and Bryce Rhodes finally goes to trial. And surprisingly, the trial actually goes ahead without too many disruptions from Bryce. And in the end, Bryce Rhodes was found guilty on all charges and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And I am so thankful for that because someone like Bryce should not be walking the streets. It's just really frustrating today's case because Bryce Rhodes should have been in prison. He has committed so many crimes. 
before the murders. He should have been in prison for the assaults on his mom and his girlfriend. He should never have even been out to commit these murders. But I'm just thankful that he is where he belongs right now. And I just want to end this video remembering the victims of today's case. Christopher Jones was described as a kind and caring man. He was a father of two and he is greatly missed by his family. He was just an innocent person going about his day. He was taken far too soon and he was taken from his family and his children. He was only 40 years old. Reese Gordon was described as being kind, gentle and a teddy bear at heart. He loved music, arts, basketball. He was just about to graduate eighth grade and he had so much ahead of him. He was only 16 years old. And finally, Larry Ordway was described as being a teddy bear at heart, just like his brother. Larry loved his family and his older brother, Reese. He loved basketball, hanging out with friends, and he was an honor roll student with an extremely bright future ahead of him. He was also taken far too soon. He was only 14 years old. And this case just breaks my heart because three innocent people were taken. And why? Because Bryce wanted to join a gang and he wanted his own gang. That was it. That was literally the reason. Ugh, so as always, let me know your thoughts, theories and opinions on today's case. And don't forget to let me know your case suggestions in the comments down below because I always want to know what you want to hear next. Thank you again to Magellan for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.